Welcome to part two of my Fathom Analytics deep dive. If you haven't watched part one, there's a link in the description. It's kind of a must watch first because in this video, we are leaving the dashboard and leaving the part where we just read our analytics to the part where we start to affect our analytics, the part where we start to track things using what are called events. Now, events are things that you want to gather data about. These are things like button clicks, page loads, form submissions, product purchases, anything that you want to be measurable that will help you determine the success of your analytics or the success of your business. And Fathom Analytics has made this extremely simple to implement. However, on the surface, if you don't really understand how it works, it can be overwhelming. So I'm here to help you simplify and implement this for your own site. To get started, we're going to go into our account inside of Fathom Analytics, and we're going to find the events tab. We glossed over this in part one, and we're coming back now in part two to learn how it works. To get started with an event, you just need to know what it is you're creating an event about. So you need a name and whether or not you're going to assign a value to it in your currency. The name of the event is what you're going to see inside of analytics. So come up with something that makes sense for you for each of your events. The last thing you want to do is have an event inside of your analytics that you really don't know what it is or what it means. The first event I'm going to teach you how to make is I think a pretty good one. It's just a simple button click. So you can use this to track the success of a funnel if you have multiple pages that you need to track, but you can also use the button click to track a lot more, including things like form submissions and product purchases. So let's get started and give ours a name. I'll call mine demo button click. For our currency, I'll just go ahead and leave that at dollar. You could choose none if you wanted to, uh, but we can affect this later if we wanted to. And I'm going to click create event. Now we have over here what's called our event ID. This is very important. So we're going to want to copy this or come back here every time we need it and copy it. I like to bring up something like a notepad or something that you're taking notes in. So I'll put my event ID here to reference later. And now what we need to do is go to the knowledge base for Fathom, where they give you, and again, this is the part that gets scary, right? People are like, oh my gosh, JavaScript. It's not that bad because I'm going to show you exactly how it works and show you just exactly what you need to get. So for our button click, we're going to scroll down until we find class right here. We want to trigger an event anytime a button is clicked with a class. So again, that's down here under events as links. This button's linked to things. And we're going to go to the one that says class right here. So we want to copy this script and let's go ahead and put this inside of our notepad. Can you see that? Okay. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger for you. There we go. Something you can read. Why not even bigger? Okay. Now we're going to take our event ID right here and we're going to copy it. And where it says your event ID, we're just going to replace that with our event ID. Now we have a part of the JavaScript that says class name. So in order to track our button, we're going to give our button a class. This is super easy using my tech stack of choice, which is Thrive Themes, particularly Thrive Architect. However, you can do this with a variety of different page builders and tools, but this is my preferred method. And you're going to see why, because it's so easy. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to just open up a page inside of Thrive Architect. However, imagine a use case like this where I have a page on my website where I list all the courses that I offer and I wanted to track how many people clicked this button right here. Is this page responsible for sending people to my sales page for my Thrive Apprentice course or something like it, right? You want to track whether or not a button you've placed is getting clicked. Keep that in your mind. So let's go ahead and open up Thrive Architect, and let's just add a simple button to the page. We'll call this our Fathom button test. Now, again, imagine you've put this button wherever you want it to go. All you have to do is select that button, whether it's in Thrive Theme Builder, Thrive Apprentice, Thrive Architect, or in your tool of choice. And we need to give this a class. In Thrive, they make that super easy. On the left-hand side, just find the HTML attributes section, which is at the very bottom. And here it is, we need to give this a class. Now you can give this a class completely unique to this button, meaning this is the only button on your site that has it. Or if this button is used many places, you could give it a name that you can use consistently across all buttons of this type. It's up to you how you want to handle this. Just keep track and build a system that works for you. 
I like to give it a class that helps me remember what it is. So I will give this uh, a class of FA for Fathom Analytics, and then we'll call it our button test. So our class is FA-button test, Fathom Analytics button test. So I'm going to copy that, and now I'm going to come back to my document. And right here, we're going to leave the period, right, the little dot, and inside of these two apostrophes, we're gonna leave those, we're just gonna take where it says class name and paste in exactly what we set for our class, which is fa-button test. Now we're going to copy this script, including the opening and closing script tags, copy that, and now we have a decision to make. Is this button that we're tracking only on this page or is it elsewhere? Are we tracking this site-wide? Could this be a button in a footer? Could this be a button in a header? Maybe you've got an offer in the header somewhere up at the top that says, click here to schedule a call. And you're like, do people actually click that button or do they get to this call page through some other means? Well, I'll show you both ways. For now, let's look at this button as if we're only ever on this page and we just wanted to track it. In the upper left, you'll see it says page with a gear. Just click on that, go to custom scripts, and we're going to put this in the body footer scripts. We want this to load last. So I'm pasting in my script that I copied. And then we're going to click Save Work. Okay, so we have our button. We're ready to click it. Let's go and look at our analytics really quick. Okay, I've brought up my demo site analytics and I'm going to scroll down. Here we go. And there's no data there. All right, let's go back to our page and click our button and see if it worked. Here we go. I clicked the button. I'm gonna come back to my analytics now and refresh. And there we go, demo button click. You can see it has a 1.7% conversion rate. <laughs> Not, hey, it's just a demo site. And you can see here that if I come up to the top, I have Fathom Testing, which is the page that I'm on right now. And if I click into this page, and I scroll down, you can see that this page had an event fire for it with a 100% conversion rate, the demo button click. Fantastic, if I click into demo button click and I delete the Fathom testing page, we can now get a list of all pages and all domains if we're tracking multiple domains like I showed you in part one. And then we can see where this button is being clicked. This is a great way to track if you have a button up in your header, like an offer like I talked about. You could see, oh, okay, great, people are clicking that button more often on blog posts or more often on sales pages or, or whatever type of pages you have on your site, you can now see just a glance where that button's being clicked. Now let's come back into Thrive Architect because I want to show you something really, really cool about Thrive Suite that you can do. So let's add in here a form. And if you have Thrive themes form elements on your site, let's say like something like this, like a lead tracker, like something where someone can sign up to give you their email. Forms inside of Thrive Suite are a little bit different. They're finicky in some ways, even though there is technically a button right here that we can get to under main options, edit form elements. It doesn't seem to work when you put the event there. In fact, while recording this, I, str I struggled with figuring out why the heck isn't this working. And then I remembered they don't work on buttons. So what you need to do instead is click on the form itself and just add it under the HTML attributes here under the class. So FA newsletter sign up. That's what we called our class. We're going to go ahead and add that here. So let's come back to our events. And that was our demo button click. We'll call this one our demo newsletter sign up. And we'll click create event. And now we'll copy our event ID. We'll replace the old one. We'll come back in here. We'll just copy that class. We'll put our class below. So there we go. We have our two things. Now, Let's take our event ID here and put it between the two apostrophes. Take our class that we just added to our newsletter sign up and put it there. Let's take this script and let's come back to our Thrive Architect demo. Let's go back to that page gear and let's, let's think about what I said before. There's a couple different places we can put this. So imagine that this sign up form were in the footer of our website to sign up. So I'm gonna leave this here because this is for our button, okay? Instead, I'm going to go into the backend of my site and apply this script globally so that it can affect all of the pages where this signup form might be. So I'm going to go to the Thrive Dashboard and I'm gonna scroll down to Analytics and Scripts. I'm gonna click Manage. I'm gonna add a new script 
and paste in our script. We'll call this our uh, FA newsletter sign up. And we're going to place this before closing body. I want this to be site wide, so I'll check both of those boxes and click continue. Now, again, I'm using Thrive Themes. However, you could do this using any plugin that you want that inserts code into your website. So we just set this up, but I've got another plugin here called WP Code. It's very easy to look it up in the WordPress plugin hub. And all you'd have to do here is click add new, add a custom snippet, paste in your code, and then come down here and say, I want this in my site-wide, we can do footer. So now it's inserted in my site-wide footer. Or similarly, if I were wanting to run this code for a particular event that I'm creating, I could insert this using conditional or smart conditional logic, as they call it. And I could insert, and I could enable that. And I could say, I want to show this in a group only on page URL is enter the page URL and this page and this page. And you can keep adding different rules if you'd like. I find that to be a little cumbersome sometimes. So I prefer to do it the method that I showed you with the page and the gear. Remember, I come up here to the page and the gear. You can manually place this on here, or I'll leave it up to you. You can use something like WP code or any number of those free code plugins out there to insert your code. So we entered ours inside of the Thrive dashboard. So I'm just gonna go back there under analytics and scripts, make sure it's toggled on. Terrific, okay. Now let's do a test. Pretend our email signup is in a blog post or in our footer and we're tracking it site-wide. So I filled out my information and now I'm going to click sign up. Coming back to our analytics and now I'm going to refresh. And there we go, the demo newsletter signup went through and see I told you I was having some trouble getting it to work because I was doing it wrong with that button. So I submitted seven uh, completions there, but there we go. Our demo newsletter signup works. The key to remember on a lead element inside of Thrive or a form made in Thrive is that you want to use the HTML class attribute on the form itself and not on the button. All right, I think that's enough examples of button clicks. If you're interested in more, I have for Convology All Access members, I have tutorials on how to use this with Surecart so that your Surecart forms can submit uh, button events into Fathom Analytics, and you can find those inside of the community. Now, the next type of event that I want to make is a page load, and a page load event is really good for uh, confirmation pages, thank you pages, that type of thing. It's actually the easiest of the types of events. So we'll call this one demo confirmation page. And what I like about this one is that we actually could assign a value, and this would be a great example to show you adding a value to this. So if I had a product like, uh, honestly, a product in any platform, I could be selling something through Thrivecart or Surecart or Samcart, or I could be doing anything, right? I could be do doing it through a fluent form. The page that they end up on is all that matters. And if that's a unique page for each of our courses or each of our products that we're selling, then we can assign a value and fire that event for e-commerce purposes or not e-commerce purposes. You could use this to track contact form submissions for your local business if you'd like. Um, but let's show you how to do that. So we'll click create event. Just like before, we now have our confirmation page event. We're gonna copy our event ID there put it into our document. And now let's go to our events section here. And let's go down and find our events as a page load. And we want to copy this right here. This script, we'll copy that. We'll open up our document again, just for editing purposes. We'll drop this in. And now let's copy our event ID, paste it within the parentheses. And now we have our script. So let's go ahead and copy this script. Okay, let's come back to our demo here and let's delete some of these old examples and let's use the same page and call this our thank you page or our confirmation page. So we'll just say our confirmation page for course sale. We'll pretend this is it. Okay, pretend this is our page. All we have to do is if you're using Thrive, just go into the gear, page gear, go to custom scripts and let's paste in our custom tracking code here and then in the body footer and click save work. And now anytime this page loads, it's going to fire that event. So let's give it a shot. There we go, we loaded our event. And now let's go back to our analytics and give it a refresh. There we go. 
demo confirmation page fired. So I could have linked to that page, like I said, any number of ways, but as long as a user lands there, it's going to fire the event. Now, I want to take a step back and say, remember I mentioned that this could be really used for e-commerce or for sales tracking. So you can see we did not assign a dollar value. Let's go back to our script and you see this zero right here. This is the value of that event. So let's say that we sold a $447 course. You need to add this in pennies. I'm speaking in US currency or cents, or uh, you can translate that to whatever it is in your currency. So for me, it would be 447.00, right? 447, no dot, but do 00. zero and that's how many pennies the product is. 44,700 pennies. Just imagine the dot were right there. Great, so let's just go ahead and copy the script again. Come back into our page and make our adjustment there. Paste in the new script, click Save Work, and let's preview it again. It fired, let's come back to our analytics and refresh. We should have one more conversion under demo confirmation page with a value. And there it is. We now have two because our first one was nothing and our value is $447. Adding a value to your events is a great way to then come back into Fathom Analytics and get a better picture of which pages are contributing to sales and to an overall uh, actual gain for your business. And you can track all of that inside of Fathom. Okay, the last event that I want to show you is possibly the most technical, but it's still very easy now that we've walked through this a few times. So this one can be a simple form submission using a standard form processor, a form with a form ID. So we'll call this demo form submission. And we won't give it a dollar value, we'll just leave it blank and we'll click create event. Now we have our form submission, let's go ahead and copy our event ID, paste in our event ID into our document. And let's go back here and now we're looking for events as form submissions. And they give us two options here because technically if your form lets you easily edit the HTML, this is a great way to add it. Uh, but for the most part, I want to stay out of HTML as much as I can. I kind of just want to use scripts and JavaScript and choose what pages to load them on. I find it's just pretty easy to do it that way. So we're going to use the script right here that says if you can't edit the HTML. So we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing. I'm going to copy the script right here and bring it back into my document and pop it in and I'm going to take my event ID and I'm going to place it right here where it says your event ID. And then we still need to get one more item and that's the ID of your form. And this is, remember I said, this is the most technical. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in my favorite form processor, Fluent Forms, but it's the exact same process inside of any form processor that has a form ID. So I'm just gonna take the basic contact form that they gave me here I copy that short code and we're going to go back to our page and let's just get rid of this use the same page we've been working on and let's drop in uh, just a text field here paste in our short code and click save so we've added our form just like we would on any page in our site using our tech stack and again i'm showing you my tech stack but you can use the same exact things that i'm showing you here with just about anything now we need to find the form id to do that you need to right click and use the inspector and I know that gets technical already. Like I said, this is the most technical option, um, but I'm gonna show you a really cool trick um, at the end of this. So follow along if you can. In Chrome, it's just right click inspect. I think you can enable the same thing in Safari, um, but we're looking for the form ID. So we want to scroll up in here inside of this. For most people, this is just a bunch of nonsense. Um, it is nonsense for me too, but we're looking for the form where it says left carrot form. In fact, you can probably control F left carrot form hit enter, and there it is, it'll highlight it in yellow for you. We're looking for the ID. So you can see right here, ID equals fluent form underscore one. And now you know the syntax there. If we were editing form number 47, it would be fluent form underscore 47. Now we need to take this, open up our document again, and paste in the ID of our form. There it is, fluent form underscore one. And copy this script. Now I bet you can guess what you need to do with this. Well, if you're using Thrive, it's really easy. The page that has your form on it, just go to the gear. Let's get rid of our old script. Pop in our new one here for our form tracking. Click Save Work. Let's go to Preview It. And let's fill out this form. All right, let's submit our form. Now let's go back to our analytics and see if it appeared. And there it is. 
demo form submission was received. If you're using Fluent Forms or another form tool, and you're like, well, I don't really feel comfortable trying to find the inspector and, and try to find things. Let me show you a really cool trick you can do instead. I'm going to show you in Fluent Forms, but apply this to any form processor that you're using. We need to go into the editor of our form and we need to edit the button. And on the right hand side, under Advanced Options, you can see we have a section here called Element Class. We can give the form a class and use the exact same technique that I showed you before using the button click based on a class. If you've already forgotten, that's this one up here. We're just looking for class right here. Anytime a class is clicked, we would take this, give it a class, put in our event ID, and we could use this exact same method for our form submission if you're using a tool that lets you set a class on the submit button like Fluent Forms does. All right, that's been our deep dive into Fathom Analytics events with a particular focus on my tech stack that I'm using, but you can take everything I've taught you today about events and apply it to whatever you're using in pretty much the exact same way. And now by using events, your analytics have been leveled up so that not only can you see how many visitors you have and views and what pages they're on and what country they're from, but now you can measure and track the performance metrics that are really going to have an impact on your business. And your analytics have gone from something that could be frustrating and uninformative or something that you might just look at and say, that's nice, I got some visitors, so what? How do I know if it's working? Now you can know if it's working and you can set it up yourself.